Hi everyone, Angela here. Today's video is sponsored by a Korean fabric company called Chun Kage. They design, produce, and distribute fabric on their own. Their fabric can be used for clothing, DIY projects, bedding, and all sorts of home decor accessories. Chun Kage has a wide selection of fabrics including cotton, linen, waterproof fabric, rayon, ripple fabric, lace, embroidery fabric, and also organic fabric. Go to the link below to purchase these high quality fabrics at reasonable prices. When I was on their website, there was so much to choose from that it was hard for me to just choose two fabrics to make this baby blanket. For one side, I chose this lightweight embossed microfiber that has a bit of stretch with a silky soft cuddly feel to it. And for the other side, I chose this lightweight cotton with this super cute colorful print. In this video, I'll be making a double layer baby blanket with a one and a half inch border. Links for all the tools I use can be found in the description below. To cut the fabric, I'm using my new lightweight Kai rotary cutter. I'll also be using my large quilting ruler with the non-slip grips in the back. To mark the fabric, I'll be using my B95 quilting ruler with the inch markings on one side that's nice and lightweight and also a vanishing marking pen. I also have pins in my magnetic bowl. For the inner fabric, first we need to remove the selvage edge from the fabric. We never use that because it's more tightly woven than the rest of the fabric and doesn't have the same stretch or feel. This blanket's going to be 28 inches wide by 38 inches long when complete. Then square off the bottom edge. I'm using this fabric as the inner layer and it needs to be cut 2 inches narrower and also 2 inches shorter than the finished measurement. For the length, I'll be cutting along the lengthwise grain or straight of grain, 36 inches. I'll measure up half of that, which is 18 inches, and place a pin on the side. If your table is large enough, just measure out the full 36 inches. Otherwise, fold your fabric in half with the pin at the bottom and just double check that it measures 18 inches right across. Also check that your outer edges line up and are nice and even. From the outer edge, measure across the top 26 inches and also measure across the bottom fold 26 inches. Join these marks with your ruler and cut out this other side and also cut out the top edge. This inner piece should measure 26 inches wide by 36 inches long. Next, using the vanishing pen, mark half an inch up from the edge on all four sides. For the outer layer fabric, turn it over so that the wrong side is up. Again, we need to remove the selvage edge and also square up the bottom. From the bottom edge, measure up 3 inches and mark across. Then measure 3 inches from the outer edge and mark across. Next, place the inner fabric on top so that wrong sides are together. Then place the edges of the fabric along those three inch lines and pin in place. Pin about an inch and a half away from the edge of the fabric. Smooth out the rest of the fabric and pin along the outer edge as well. Next mark a line three inches above the top edge of the inner fabric. Pin it in place and then mark three inches out all along from the outer edge of the fabric. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to like, share, subscribe, turn on all of your notifications and leave a comment below. Now cut out along these lines. The outer fabric now measures 32 inches wide by 40 inches long. So what you end up with is the outer fabric three inches bigger all around and everything pinned in place. You also have the lengthwise grains of the fabrics matched up and also the crosswise grains of the fabrics matched up. So the way this works as self-binding is the outer edges get wrapped on top of that inner layer and then we need to create a mitered corner. To do this, we need to draw a line from the inner corner to the outer corner. Then mark three and a half inches from the outer corner on both sides. Join those two marks, creating a 45 degree angle, and then cut along that line to remove the corner. 
then repeat for all the other corners. Now we need to mark along all of the straight edges one inch up from the outer edge. Skip the corners and continue all around. The reason why we mark an inch all around is because we need to press up the outer edges half an inch. And by matching the outer edge to the line, it makes it very easy to keep it nice and even. So now press all four sides half an inch up. All the sides should look like this and the corners stay flat. To make the mitered corner, fold the outer fabric along that diagonal line with right sides together. Make sure to line up the outer edges and also the folds along the top. Next we'll be sewing this edge with a half inch seam allowance. Now when you've got a little bit of bulk at the top, it's a good idea to lift your foot and start your stitching a little bit further in on the fabric rather than trying to push all that fabric under the presser foot. Lift your foot, sew a few stitches, and then reverse making sure to catch the folds at the top. Continue stitching and back tack to finish. You can see the folds line up nice and evenly. Next, we just need to trim down the corners. Cut away on a slight curve, making sure not to cut the stitching. Repeat for all the other corners. Next, open up all the seams and press them apart with your fingers. Then turn the corners right side out and use something like a knitting needle to poke out the corners if you need to. Next, place the folded edge of the outer fabric along the line of the inner fabric. Then pin along the fold through all the layers with the head of the pin facing you. As you're doing this, you can remove the pins from before. Now before I sew along the fold, I almost forgot that I want to place a little patch on the corner here. Now I'll need to open up the corner because I can't use this as the iron-on patch that it is. You can't iron onto this microfiber, so I'll just have to sew it onto the one layer. Of course you can do this step right after you cut out your fabric, or you can add your own embroidery. Okay, so I've repinned the corner down, and now we need to edge stitch along the fold. Start in the corner, back tack, and then edge stitch all around and back tack to finish. It's a good idea to hang on to all of your fabric from behind to help guide it along. Or use a walking foot if you need to. You can also zigzag or use a decorative stitch instead of just a straight stitch to attach these layers together. Decorative trims such as soft ribbons and lace can also be added. When you get to the corner, have your needle down, lift your foot and pivot. Using this method, everything stays nice and flat, nothing is twisted and there's no way you can mess up those corners. Now just give the edges one last press and you're done. Now, if you're an experienced sewer, there's a lot of steps that you can skip to make this blanket. And you can use the same method to make anything that needs a border, such as napkins or placemats. Make sure to check out some of my other videos. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, take care and happy sewing.